recording. The next talk will be given by Laura Pispanen from Aalto University in Finland about defining quantum games. Please take it away, Laura. Uh, looking forward to your talk. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And hi, everyone. So my name is Laura Pispanen. Um, I'm actually a theoretical physicist who started with the foundations of quantum physics back in the day, but ended up playing, I mean, um, studying cool games for a living. Um, I'm really excited to be here again today <laughs> and getting this wonderful opportunity to present my research that I've been preparing for over a year now. I think it's too long. Um, I'm happy to see that there are so many experts here and I hope that this will inspire some conversation and some criticism also will be provided for structure. So now my presentation is based on this article that just came out fresh from the archive <laughs> yesterday. There was an issue of, of uh, making sure that IBM is okay with us adding the names there. So uh, in this group, you had two theoretical physicists, a game scholar and a computer scientist each who have been tightly working with quantum games together, if you add it all up, it, it comes over almost to 40 years. So individually, anything between eight and a couple of years. I tried to estimate something like that. So uh, in our paper, we look through the history of computer games, uh, game definitions, uh, science games in particular, and of course, uh, quantum games, um, and we look at them through the motivation behind developing these games. We take a closer look at how these games are referencing to quantum physics. So we're exploring games that are inspired by quantum physics, games that teach the theory of quantum physics, games that serve the study of quantum physics, and games that use technologies uh, in their implementation. So quantum computers, for example. And in order to analyze these games and to define quantum games, we provide these three aspects that we call the dimensions of quantum games. So the perceivable dimension of quantum physics, uh, the dimension of quantum technologies, and the dimension of scientific purposes. Uh, we'll then get to categorize these games a bit by drawing some bigger characteristics of games and, and their purposes and the technologies. And this will then, uh, through these observations, give us like a characterizing definition of quantum games. And in the end, if we have time, let's see some, some discussion related. And I will propose some future ideas for quantum games and also address some interesting questions related to the research of them. So the body of quantum games. So to begin with, we wanted to know what quantum games there already are in, in order for us to even find a suitable definition to characterize all of them and capture the variety of them. Because not all quantum games are for serious use. Um, I've collected a list of any quantum physics related games for some time now and characterized them one way on my midterm review from my PhD. But I wasn't happy with this, this characterization, and um, I discussed this with my advisor, Dr. Anagaisa Kultima. Uh, she's a game scholar from that side. And we also soon noticed that our lovely collaborator from, from other projects as well, Dr. James Wooden, had, had made his version of, of characterizing quantum games. And we've collaborated with Marcel Pfaffhauser also from IBM earlier and invited him to discuss with us. So the discussion started and we started finding a way to describe and maybe analyze these games and their possible connections. So we'll look into that into this presentation. And here's, a, by the way, a picture of a screenshot uh, from a citizen science game prototype. I participated uh, developing in a quantum game jam 2019 that we organized. There's a little hamster there and in his hamster ball and trying to escape from, from uh, the teeth of a shark. <laughs> and the, the wave pattern here is a numerical simulation of a probability distribution for a trivial well system and a particle confined in it. So related to the quantum moves to in, in a way that Shaima just uh, wonderfully explained to us. But uh, like I promised, a really short uh, look into the history of computer games. 
So in the 50s, uh, one of the first games on computers, Birdie the Brain in the picture, was built in, in Toronto by Joseph, Joseph Cates. Uh, and then another game, for example, uh, OXO was developed by Alexander Shafter Douglas for his studies uh, on the human computer interaction. So both Bertie the Brain and OXO, uh, they demonstrated a game of tic-tac-toe, so an existing game against artificial intelligence. And they were developed mainly to demonstrate the newest advantages of, uh, you know, in computer development. So to cut it short, um, as soon as the first computers were made, uh, it didn't take long for the first programs to run games on them to be developed. And like we saw the purpose was, some, was somewhat serious and educational and outreach type. And they illustrated kind of like, what can computers do? So um, it took a couple of years for the first games to be created for pure entertainment and not for serious use. And then some years more uh, uh, to give us something completely new, um, games that showed what computers could do for games. And uh, we have, of course, came a long way uh, to a variety of games uh, on our mobile phones or even in our watches and, and on different types of computers. And there's a lot of different genres, which takes us to defining games even. So a few words related to this. When we're talking about defining quantum games, we need to talk about the games themselves. So in this book, A Rules of, uh, of Play, the authors discussed how play and games are connected. They looked at existing definitions of, of a game and provided their own definition. And I feel this is like the most referenced game definition and possibly partly because it is kind of nicely simplified. They say uh, a game is a system in which players engage in an artificial conflict. Uh, that is defined by rules and it results in a quantifiable outcome. Uh, again, another type of a, uh, like maybe I'll just reference to the article. Um, Jesper Yule, for example, is focusing on a rule based game. But what I wanted to show here is that uh, there is already room for discussion on defining what a game is. So uh, in the following and on our definition for, for a quantum game, we are concentrated on what the quantum physics uh, related aspects are. And I wanted to form our study in a way that would include games and playful creations as broadly as possible. So in this context, uh, we can consider like a free use of, for the word game. But uh, there is one thing that I also wanted to touch. Um, like as the discipline of game studies has matured, we've also developed more vocabulary for different games. And there are several academic subcategories, concepts for games and, and other types of categories also. Uh, when you, for example, search for games, there are le leisure games, uh, educational games, and then this word science game. Um, is used. And many, if not most games that are labeled as science games or science-based games, uh, they are educational games focusing on natural sciences. And they are usually designed especially for younger audience. But is this all? Spoiler, no. Um, something I wanted to point out is what Magnussen uh, also writes, uh, 2014. She draws to the conclusion that digital science games offer a bigger multitude of game formats. And she provides this categorization of science games through the different goals for the player. Like um, there are aspects of training, inquiry, professional simulations and epistemic games, embodied system games, research, collaboration games. Um, and, and they conclude, maybe we could use this term more like uh, in what it tells us to describe all games and all sciences. So quite bravely, I would suggest uh, uh, in the future when we're talking about science games, we'd say that they are games that contribute to scientific work either directly, uh, such as helping to solve research questions, or indirectly, such as building awareness or teaching a scientific topic. And it's slightly inspired by our definition of a science game and that we made, made in a paper some time ago. So, um, quantum games, finally. Um, here is, by the way, a screenshot of another citizen science prototype. Uh, it was called Quiz. 
and it was um, part, uh, I was part of developing it uh, in an earlier project, uh, EU funded project called QPlay. Um, same simulation as was in the hamster weight, and we can come back to that later. So to begin this study of quantum games, um, I wanted to know uh, what games they are in order for us to even find a suitable definition to characterize them. Um, so I started to collect this list of games sometimes in the year 2018 or 2017. And um, I've luckily not been the only one to do this, but we just right away didn't know about each other. Um, I got some new references from the list of awesome games that I cited in, in this version. And from the QIntern project, um, there was um, a uh, QIntern project devoted to the landscaping, the quantum games that there are. They also contacted me and I shared my list at the time, but not all of those games were in that list. So maybe, maybe we could, I don't know, continue that project later. Um, and yeah, and a lot of people have been asking about this and there should be maybe a website collecting all these games. And I know that those interns actually started such a project. So maybe, maybe there's something to it. Um, but so many games, uh, how and why are they referencing quantum physics or, or how are they related to quantum physics? And this was the question we wanted to explore. We could first take a look at the motivation behind developing these games. Um, so we could uh, take a look at the serious quantum related games like and luckily we had this wonderful talk uh, from Shyama and we got the best possible introduction to what are serious quantum games and and any games that have a scientific purpose purpose behind them. And um, I also list there a couple of other other projects as well. And the body of pedagogical games surrounding quantum physics has uh, been even larger. And to my knowledge, the only training simulation related to quantum physics is, is the lab simulator um, that Chaima introduced to us. So um, a particular motivation for quantum game development is the desire to see what quantum computers are able to do and to what extent. So with games, it is possible to explore the limits of, of computers. And this has also been uh, a big part of the motivation for the development of the first quantum computer games. So games on quantum computers. But um, all these listed games here are made by, uh, made by either straight up physicists, quantum physicists, or groups led by quantum physicists. So, but to add this, uh, since 2014, uh, the research group that I started in, in, in Burgu University, uh, has organized quantum game jams, events for anyone interested to join and develop quantum games. Um, we have, of course, not been the only ones, but uh, from these games, I, I know all of them. And a quick reference again to this, this paper about uh, quantum game jams. Uh, in these events, um, each of the quantum games were developed within just a few days and not only by quantum physicists. So uh, these events and courses like the quantum games at Alda that we taught with Daria uh, this year uh, have made it possible for people outside academic circles to have a go at developing games. And in particular, now that quantum games have not just been clearly for serious purposes, there's been so many other innovative ways to connect quantum physics to the game. So, and, and a side note here, these are not in a causal order, as you can see, so it doesn't, we just looked at games from different motivations. So, to the defining of, of what are quantum games, um, we went through this list back and forth over and over again, and we gathered different ways that these games uh, were connected to or were referenced in uh, quantum physics. So these three aspects arose as the most clear and prominent ones. Um, scientific purposes, uh, there were some perceivable quantum physics and the use of quantum technologies. And if someone could say, am I sharing the screen right? Just to make sure, just write it in the chat. I just started to question myself. Um, yeah, so, um, 
we can start with the placebo quantum physics. So anything that you can see or, or there's a reference to quantum physics in the game itself that you can see it or, or take the reference or interacting with the game, or you can read it through a rule book or the description, for example. We can maybe look at these through different examples. Um, so here, uh, this is an older version of the quantum game with photons. Uh, but the idea is the same. You have the basic tools and behavior you'd witness on a quantum optics lab table. Uh, and you'll get it through the game and interacting with the game. And you'll learn the lo logic behind these tools and, and uh, parts of it and the basics of quantum phenomena and about its probabilistic nature. And I actually recommend you check the newer one out. There's the link. Uh, it's an addictive puzzle <laughs> and the newer version is like, it's really pretty. So I advise you to go there. And then uh, inspirational aspects from quantum physics. They are all kinds of things. Some games inspire from quantum physical concepts like here, two characters acting simultaneously is a reference to quantum entanglement. And sometimes such a behavior is said to represent spatial superposition, for example. So these we can see quite a lot in in, for example, the quantum game jam games. And uh, there are multiple uh, quantum versions of, of classical games like chess and tic-tac-toe, and, and there's a couple of versions of, of Pong game. And here in quantum tic-tac-toe with Qs uh, instead of Cs, uh, you add up to kind of like the normal tic-tac-toe with some quantum phenomena-based rules. And you get a whole other game through which you are introduced to these concepts like quantum superposition, quantum measurement, and, and quantum entanglement. Um, and back to our hamster wave, there might be like a straight up numerical simulation. And here it's a Schrodinger equation uh, used in the game. Uh, though you'd learn this only by reading this description of, of the game and nothing else in the game itself references to quantum physics. And, and like I said, Hamster Wave was a citizen science prototype. The aim was similar to the project of quantum moves to that was just introduced. So different types of, of uh, ways to, I don't know, to kind of like the same uh, scientific purpose behind it. But yeah, like Shaima wonderfully introduced us to uh, the different scientific purposes. Uh, and Zegi, after me, I think is going to introduce educational games related to quantum. So I'll just skip this for timely reasons. And then we can then talk about the use of quantum technologies instead. So uh, as an example, one of my favorite games from our Quantum Game Jam 2019, uh, Qubit the Barbarian, where the structure of the maze is generated using uh, either directly sourcing randomness from a quantum computer or, or uh, simulated quantum computing like using Qiskit. Uh, and the game also explores the concepts of, of measurement and the probabilistic nature of, of quantum physics in, in these actions that the character is able to do, like revealing the effects of the maze structure when, when you're actually stepping on these cubes, for example. And that is also found online. So uh, we end up with a wallet text that I will simplify like this. Um, for, the, for the characteristically defining quantum games, we uh, propose using these dimensions of quantum games, uh, the perceivable dimension of quantum physics, uh, dimension of quantum technologies, and the dimension of scientific purposes. And I emphasize here on the word purpose, because not all the games that we, um, as a general or, um, group of people in, in physics and related to games, not all the games necessarily meet their original purpose. So I'd say the dimension is there, even if there's a like a motivation behind it in the beginning. So with these, uh, we would define a quantum game being uh, any games that reference the theory of quantum physics, quantum technologies, or quantum computing through a perceivable mean, um, or they would connect quantum physics through a scientific purpose, or they'd use quantum technologies. So other simulations or actual devices. And, and most of all with this, we want to start a conversation. So uh, for example, something interesting to discuss would be what are the games that are in the outlines of, of, of these dimensions? 
so games like Quantum Break that was released in 2016. Um, the game references quantum physics through this concept of making these quantum leaps or jumps and, and uh, where the protagonist is able to control time itself to some extent. Um, but this game uses no quantum technologies in the creation of them or in the gameplay. Uh, it doesn't have any motiv uh, motivation to be used uh, for educational purposes or for citizen science. But still the core idea of quantum break and, and certain visual elements in it of, in, in the game are deeply inspired by quantum physics. And they've been designed together with a quantum physicist. So one could take a strict view and say that the references are not quantum enough and they are not clear if you just play the game, sure. Um, but our aim is to provide a tool for this discussion and to bring ground for, for these arguments, a way to reason how and why game would be quantum and why not. And uh, related to these aspects, not all the combinations, so to say, yet existed. So we couldn't necessarily say that we found a game that didn't have any perceivable dimension, but would still use quantum technologies and have a scientific use. And this is likely due to the fact that um, uh, quantum technologies are an interesting novel resource uh, to use in games. And, and that's why uh, you would usually underline it heavily <laughs> if you'd use it. So it would be perceivable. And, but it was interesting to talk like, what would a game like this even look like? Like, could you have an educational game where you wouldn't like perceive anything concrete from, from quantum physics? How would that even be possible? Or would it somehow teach the logic behind something related to quantum? Or, or maybe it could just be a, a sort of a citizen science game that simulates quantum computers. And um, for this, would the game Dekodoku, for example, serve as a game like that, such a game? And um, we note here that the dimensions are very welcome to be used also in defining and exploring quantum art, quantum music, uh, quantum theater, uh, or other creations that reference quantum physics. Um, for example, our collaborator, Dr. Enrique Solano, he has suggested his way of categorizing quantum art in a way that captures kind of like the depth of quantumness, so to say, uh, from inspirational all the way to actually running uh, like less on a quantum computer. Um, but I'd suggest that um, like as an art piece could similarly have many ways of connecting to quantum physics. So a similar definition might be beneficial also in describing quantum art in these um, suggested categories as well. And what would be the further layers for these uh, dimensions? Like, uh, what would it be the further layers in scientific purposes? Like, is something heavier than, than other? What would be the difference between, um, I don't know, simulated quantum, uh, like numerics in it, or just, just being an educational game? And how would that affect the game design itself? So similarly to the, this is the same slide as earlier for the history of quantum game, computer games, uh, we could look at uh, quantum computer games. So seeing like first there'd be existing games on quantum computers, like uh, Cat Box Scissors uh, uh, is on a quantum computer made by James Wooden. And then maybe we got uh, entertaining games more from quantum game jams. There were no serious purpose behind them. And the big question would be like, what would quantum computers give for games? So one possible uh, answer for this is the game Clay. Uh, let's see, uh, they like, I'll actually give you the reference because uh, their direction is, is like the vision is giving truly unique experiences through the game. The dynamics of the storyline of, of the game will uh, lay heavily upon uh, emulation of interference effects on a quantum computer, for example. And what if the interaction between the player or, and, and a quantum computer would be offered as a lagless and a constant feedback look? Um, maybe their probabilistic nature of, of quantum physical phenomena could offer something really unique on, on each run of a game, so to say. But check, uh, check that reference for in particular, they'll go deeper, deeper into that. But with that, um, a big thank you. Uh, you can find the paper, I will link it later. Uh, I think uh, Zegi already found it, thank you. And just to mention, we're going to host a Quantum Game Jam this September and you'll find it on Discord. And thank you very much.
Thank you so much for this great talk, Laura. I think no one will be bored tonight and everyone will be playing Cupid the Barbarian. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for setting this framework and taking us into this world. Um, currently, there are many uh, hackathons also for developing games. When does it qualify to appear in your list? I think you, you already outlined the basically the, the physics uh, framework it needs to satisfy, right? But how, how well developed does it need to be too? Uh, well, hackathons actually, they have a different type of a purpose. So there might be like a clear, like each hackathon might, might have a clear way of, of like uh, giving points to the games that are developed during the hackathon. But like Quantum Game Jam, uh, we want to offer kind of like more uh, interactive and, and somehow like a freer setting that there's no competition between the projects so they'd be free to express their creativity instead of having a, like a serious serious meaning for it so it depends on on the event I'll, I'll say put it that way <laughs> yeah. yeah and then they can contact you to to get into the excel uh, sheet yeah some very positive comments uh about making it easy to learn quantum mechanics. Um, everyone was asking for the references uh, which were given meanwhile. Um, thank you, Laura, for the wonderful presentation. Yeah, Re really great. Thank you so much for, uh, for framing this, this for everyone and inspiring everyone to play, to play games and start developing games. Yeah, and if nothing else, uh, you can email me and um, Nora, who's presenting later, and I are trying to use this uh, website also to our outreach. So I haven't linked the, linked the archive link there yet because it's so fresh, but otherwise uh, I will upkeep that in the way that if there's something new and the list of all the quantum games is, is linked there as well. So if nothing else, something that I learned from Shaima is that, you know, keep a blog of some type, but this is, my version <laughs> of, of this outreach. Thank you so much. And she is indeed also uh, commenting wonderful presentation and getting started on defining quantum games is really needed. Yes, thank you for sharing this with all of us, Laura. And then I will stop the recording and we go to Stegi. Thank you. <laughs>